All obeisances, all glory, Shalom Prabhupada. How are you, Guru Maharaj? I'm not too bad. How are you? Yeah, I'm okay too. <laughs> Everyone's back to work, eh? Some cranks over. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Are the, are the children still in Patia? No, Gurmaj, they they are back from last Friday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did they have a good time? Yes, they were great. Will we begin? Yes, Gurmaj. Om Magyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanjana that's my Shri Gurave. Recording in progress. Vancha kaupa tarubhyasya kripa sindhu bhaye vacha patita nam pavan hebhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Hare We're reading the Nectar of Devotion. We're on chapter number three, Eligibility of the Candidate for Accepting Devotional Service. Forgot to put you. They're doing it now. Doing it now. Okay. Mm. Uh, Okay, so Lord Krishna was describing about different kinds of people who come to Krishna consciousness. He described the four kind four reasons why people may come to devotional service. There was the one in distress. And there was people in search of wealth. And some, there were people who were curious. And there are people who come with knowledge. So Lord Krishna described these four people are all good, they're all pious people because they've come to Krishna. <laughs> people who are not so pious, they may worship demigods, they may not come to Krishna. They may worship other gods, they may be they may even go they may even be atheists. <laughs> So anyway, it was described that the person who is in, with knowledge, he is the best of, of the four kinds of people, four reasons, four reasons for coming to Krishna consciousness. The one who comes with knowledge is the best because he doesn't have any material desire. So other people, like the one in distress or in search of wealth, they 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 want something. They need material benefit. And the person who is inquisitive, he's a little better, but still he he he's on the mental platform. Uh, 
And we, we see people sometimes come, they ask a lot of questions, but they never get away from the mental platform. They never actually accept, although they ask a lot of questions, they never actually accept the real truth. And so they the, after asking questions, then they should surrender to Krishna. They should accept what they're being taught and they should surrender to Krishna. And even the person who has comes with knowledge, he is also not purely spiritual because he's thinking more about knowledge that rather than devotion to Krishna. The, the real goal is to develop love for Krishna. It doesn't matter how much you know. It doesn't matter what kind of education you have. It doesn't matter what kind of birth you have. What is important is that you've developed an attachment to Krishna and you want to serve Krishna. So knowledge will help us to come to come to a higher level of Krishna consciousness to develop more love and devotion for Krishna. If we just have religion without philosophy, then it will just be sentimental. Sometimes, sometimes the Krishna conscious devotees are accused of being sentimental because they're always singing and dancing. So people think they're just sentimental people. Even 500 years ago, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was chanting in Benares and people thought he was sentimental. But then when Lord Chaitanya talked with the Mayavadi sannyasis, when they talked philosophy, Lord Chaitanya explained philosophy to them. They didn't understand the Vedanta, but Lord Chaitanya explained it to them. So one who is a devotee, he's, he's, he, he will chant Hare Krishna, but he also understands, he knows, he should know the philosophy. We don't need to know a lot. But we just need, we should know the basic. All right, so we'll read what Prabhupada says here in the text. It can be concluded that a person who is freed from the bodily concept of life is an eligible candidate for pure devotional service. สรุปได้ว่าบุคคลผู้เป็นอิสระจากแนวคิดชีวิตทางวัตถุเป็นผู้สมัครที่มีสิทธิ์สำหรับการวิถีตนเสียสละหลับใช้ที่บริสุทธ
It is also stated in the Bhagavad Gita that after Brahman realization, when we get freed from material anxiety and we see every living entity on an equal level, then we're able to enter into devotional service. <laughs> So this is from the 18th chapter, text number 51. Brahma Bhutta Prasanatma Na Sochati Na Kanchati Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Madhbhaktim Labhate Param. And Prabhupada has explained the, the verse there in the text. Brahma Bhutta Prasanatma, that when we come to the platform of Brahman, we'll become happy. There won't be any problem, no material anxiety. And then nashochati nakanchati, we don't hanker to get anything and we don't lament about anything. And then sama sarveshu bhuteshu, we see all living entities equally on the same level. And then we're qualified to take up devotional service. All right, so then Prabhupada continues, he says, there are three kinds of happiness. There is material happiness, spiritual happiness, and the happiness from devotional service. But the happiness from devotional service is only possible as long as we're not affected by the material energy. If somebody has a desire for material enjoyment in their heart, then it will stop them from doing devotional service. And if we have a desire to become one with the Supreme, then that will also obstruct us doing devotional service. So both the desire for material enjoyment and the desire to become one with the Supreme are material desires. The impersonal, those who are impersonalists, they cannot appreciate the spiritual happiness of devotees. And they cannot appreciate the loving exchange between Krishna and his devotees. Krishna. 
in the only thing impersonalists want they just de their desire is to become one with the supreme so this idea to become one with the supreme this is just an extension of the material material world in the material world, everybody's trying to be the top man, to be the most important person. Right. We want to be the top man. He went, he was getting the book printed. And so he went to the printers to talk to the people about printing his books. So Prabhupada met with the board of directors, all the managers of the printing company, and each of them's business card. Who was more important, he put his card on the top. So the most important man, his card was on the top, and the, the smallest man, the least important man, his card was on the bottom. So Prabhupada was talking to them about the books and they were discussing the price. And then they all, they all the, the, the big managers, they all got, got up and left. And only the, the youngest, the, the, the least important of the managers, he stayed to talk to Prabhupada. So Prabhupada was talking to them and Prabhupada asked him, he said, what is your goal in life? So the man took his, you know, his, he saw the cards on the table there, all the managers had put their cards on the table and his card was on the bottom so he took out his card from the bottom of all the cards and he put it on the top he said this is my goal so Prabhupada laughed. He thought, yeah, this is true. In the material world, everyone is like that. Everyone wants to be the top man. It doesn't matter where you are in the family or in the society or in the country. Everyone is competing. They want to be number one. They want to be the most important person. So this, this is a material concept of life. We're thinking, I am better. I'm better than the other person. And, and we can extend this, this thinking, we extend that thinking more and more, that we actually want to, to become, we want to become one with the greatest of all, with the Supreme Lord. So this desire to merge, to become one with the Supreme, this is a material desire. It's a little better than just simply wanting material things. 
but it's a material desire. So the Prabhupada says the perfect spiritual concept of life is complete knowledge of a constitutional position. And we should know, we should, we should know how to connect ourselves to the, the service of Krishna. We should know that we are very, very limited, but the Lord is unlimited. We should also know that it is not possible to actually become one with the Supreme. We may, we may want to become one with the Supreme, but it's not possible. So anyone who has any desire, then the, any desires for, for sense gratification, then by becoming one with the Supreme, but any anyone who has any desire or for satisfying his sense becoming more and more important either in the material sense or in the spiritual sense that, then he cannot actually enjoy devotional service <laughs> So Rupa Goswami compares these desires for enjoyment or for liberation. He said the, both of these desires will bring us trouble in, if we try. <laughs> So material enjoyment, in Sanskrit we say bhukti, and the desire for liberation we say mukti. So both bhukti and mukti are material desires and not good for devotional service. <laughs> So if somebody has desire for liberation or if somebody just has desire for sense gratification, it's compared to like somebody who is haunted by a ghost or troubled by witches. Although they, they're trying to, to get something, they want material enjoyment or they want to become uh, one with the Supreme, they cannot actually enjoy these things. But their minds are so much attracted to the material things, the, what they want. They want material enjoyment or they want liberation. They're not thinking about devotional service. <laughs> But if one is actually a devotee, he doesn't care about liberation, he doesn't think about liberation. 
ถ้าเขารับบุคคลเป็นสาวกเนี่ยคือเขาจะไม่ได้คิดเกี่ยวกับสิ่งเหล่านี้เขาไม่เขาจะไม่ได้คิดเกี่ยวกับตรงนี้ And Lord Chaitanya, in his s h i k s h a s t i k a m he prays like that. He said, "I don't want wealth. I don't want followers. I don't want beautiful women. I just want devotional service, birth after birth." Yeah, Lord Chaitanya, in his s h i k s h a s t i k a m he said, "I don't want wealth. I don't want followers. I don't want beautiful women. I just want devotional service, birth after birth." Yeah, Lord Chaitanya, in his s h i k s h a s t i k a m he said, "I don't want wealth. I don't want followers. I just want devotional service." ความสุขทางวัตถุใดๆแต่ข้าเนี่ยขอให้ได้รับใช้พระองค์ชาติแล้วชาติเรา Lord Chaitanya said I I don't want anything material I just want the devotional I don't want liberation I don't want material enjoyment I just want devotional service birth after birth ท่านก็จะปรารถนาบอกว่าข้าพเจ้าเนี่ยไม่ต้องการความสุขทางวัตถุหรือไม่ต้องการความหลุดพ้นสิ่งเดียวที่ข้าพเจ้าปรารถนาก็คือขอให้ข้าพเจ้าเนี่ยได้ปฏิบัติการให้ตนเสียสละรับใช้ต่อพระองค์อย่างแน่วแน่มันคงชาติแล้วชาติเรา So Lord Chaitanya said I don't mind if I have to take many births in the material world but I just pray that I can continue to do devotional service พระเจ้าเจตัญญาทรงบอกว่าข้าพเจ้าไม่สนใจว่าข้าพเจ้าต้องเกิดในโลกวัตถุนี้เนี่ยกี่ครั้งแต่ว่าสิ่งเดียวที่ข้าพเจ้าสงสัยก็คือขอให้ข้าพเจ้าเนี่ยได้ทำการอุทิศตนเสียสารับใช้อย่างเงี้ยตลอดไป So the pure devotee he doesn't have Uh, he, he, you know, of course, usually we say the goal is to develop love of God. So one who has developed love of God, he will engage in devotional service. He will want to serve Krishna. Don't think that love of God. Means you do nothing. You just sit and say, "Oh, I love Krishna." No, love of God means service. You'll be active in service. ความรักต่อพระองค์เพราะว่านำหมายถึงการที่เราเนี่ยอยากจะพัฒนาการรับใช้ต่อพระองค์ไม่ใช่แบบว่านั่งเฉยๆ So when Lord Chaitanya prays for devotional service, that that's a sign that he's got love of God. ตัวอย่างที่เราสามารถเห็นได้ก็คือของพระองค์เจ้าเจตัญญาเนี่ยซึ่งพระองค์เนี่ยทรงได้รับความรักของพระกวานแล้วเป็นนี้ So Lord Chaitanya prays that his devotion to Krishna will remain very strong, will will be very strong, it will always be there. แต่ท่านก็ทรงบอกว่าการวิจารณ์เสียสละรับใช้ต่อพระเจ้าเนี่ยมันจะคงควรที่จะอยู่ที่นั่นอย่างอย่างแบบว่าแรงกล้า And I may take birth many times, but I don't want to forget Krishna. So Prabhupada explains that a pure devotee is very attracted to worship and glorify Krishna. He likes to glorify not only Krishna but Krishna's name, Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's form, Krishna's quality. And the the devotee the devotee is so busy serving Krishna he doesn't even think about liberation he doesn't care he doesn't worry about liberation. Ah, sawok, nee, จะไม่มีความคิดกังวลเกี่ยวกับความหลุดพ้นเลยสักนิดเดียว And Prabhupada quotes a great devotee, a great devotee called Bilva Mangala Thakur, and he said, "If I'm doing devotional service to Krishna, then." Very, I, I can very easily feel your presence everywhere. Then, I'm going to say, "Mother, I'm going to give you a 
มีบำบังกรถักปูนนะท่านบอกว่าถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยมีการปฏิบัติการอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้ต่อพระเจ้าเนี่ยเราจะสามารถรู้สึกถึงการมีอยู่หรือการปรากฏของพระองค์ทุกคนทุกแห่ง But b i l v a m a n g o said he said but if I get liberation Uh, said, liberation would would just be standing waiting to serve me. Uh, แล้วท่านก็บอกต่อว่าถ้าเกิดว่าข้าเนี่ยต้องการความหลุดพ้นเนี่ยความหลุดพ้นเนี่ยจะยืนรอข้าอยู่ตรงนั้นเลย So for a pure devotee, it's not important to get liberation. Uh, สำหรับสาวผู้บริสุทธิ์แล้วเนี่ยมันไม่มีความจำเป็นที่จะต้องได้รับความหลุดพ้น So then. Prabhupada or Rupa Goswami gives us some quotes from the Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, chapter twenty-five, verse thirty-six. So this is the important chapter, chapter twenty-five. Lord Kapila is instructing his mother Devahuti. Uh, Lord devotees, my pure devotees are so attracted by seeing my different forms, and when they see my, the beauty of my, they're attracted. They see the day of Krishna, see Krishna laughing. They see Krishna's pastimes. And they see Krishna look at them, and they and they become so absorbed in the thought of Krishna. And they're they they're so absorbed and think they they dedicate their lives fully to Krishna. So these devotees they don't desire any kind of liberation. And they don't want any kind of material happiness. But Lord Kapila said, "I give them a place with all my associates in the spiritual world." If we want to go to the spiritual world, we have to be also pure. We have to give up our material desires. So, so Prabhupada explains. He said the evidence from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Tells us that the pure devotees are elevated to the association of Krishna. And Rupa Goswami, he has composed a nice verse describing like this. Rupa Goswami said, "If somebody is really attracted by the beauty of the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, or of his service, uh, or of his service by whom." Uh, Or of his service, but his heart by such is always full with transcendental bliss. So Rupa Goswami says, 
if somebody, if somebody is really attracted by the beauty of Krishna, then this, he will feel so much happiness and he will never want liberation because that's not important for a devotee. But that liberation is very, very important for the impersonalists. For the impersonalists, that's their goal. So we should understand the difference between the devotee and the impersonalist. Then Rupa Goswami gives us another verse, also from Srimad Bhagavatam, from the third canto, chapter 4, verse 15. And Uddhava is uh, talking to Lord Krishna. Uddhava is a very dear friend of Krishna. He is like Krishna's secretary. So Uddhava said to Krishna, he said, for persons who are doing your devotional service, there's nothing else to be obtained. There's nothing as great as devotional service. Hmm. There's nothing, there's no value in being religious or economic development, or sense gratification, or liberation. The happiness from these things is nothing compared to the happiness we get from devotional service. So Uddhava tells Krishna, he said, I don't want to get anything from, any results from these things. He said, I only want to have faith and devotion unto your lotus feet. And then there's another verse, again also from Lord Kapila, from the third canto, again, 25th chapter, text number 34. The last one, it was text number, uh, last one we were hearing, uh, anyway, it was the same chapter. Uh, okay. Verse number 36, now it's verse number 34. Hare Krishna, are you there? Hare Krishna. Uh, you read it already? Uh, another, I said there's another verse given by Lord Kapila from the Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 25, verse number 34. Gods are always full with the service of my lotus feet, and they're prepared to do anything for my satisfaction. Oh, wow. 
สาวกผู้ที่หัวใจเปรียบไปด้วยการรับใช้พระบาทรูปดอกบัวของข้าและพร้อมทำทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างเพื่อให้ข้าพอใจ And the most fortunate devotees are those who come together to talk and to understand about my pastimes and my form and to glorify me โดยเฉพาะสาวกผู้โชคดีที่มาชุมนุมกันเพื่อเข้าใจคุณสมบัติลีลาและรูปและรูปลักษณ์ของข้า So it's very good for the devotees to come together with other devotees and to talk about Krishna and glorify Krishna. And they never want to become one with Krishna. And if they are, if they're given a, a, a position like Uddhava, or if they're given a position like, uh, like uh, yeah, like uh, Krishna in Krishna's abode, or opulences like Krishna, or even personal association with Krishna, and have the same bodily features as Krishna, then they will refuse to accept. แล้วก็บอกว่าตรงนี้เนี่ยบอกว่าเช่นนี้พวกเขาได้ร่วมสรรเสริญกิจกรรมแต่ไม่เคยปรารถนาที่จะเป็นหนึ่งเดียวกับข้าจึงไม่พูดถึงเรื่องการมาเป็นหนึ่งเดียวกับข้าหากได้รับการเสนอในสถานภาพที่จะได้รับตําแหน่งเหมือนกับข้าความมั่งคั่งเหมือนกับกฤษณาหรือการได้อยู่ใกล้ชิดกับกฤษณาร่างกายเหมือนกับกฤษณาพวกเขาเนี่ยจะปฏิเสธ So there are different kinds of liberation One liberation is to become one with the supreme, but that liberation will never be accepted by devotees. And there are four other kinds of liberation. The devotee doesn't want them. But Krishna may give them to the devotee. The devotee doesn't want liberation because they're so satisfied to do devotional service. They don't want anything more. So that is the nature of devotional service, that you feel so satisfied, you feel so content, so happy, to do service for Krishna. <laughs> okay, there's another quote from the Srimad Bhagavatam. This one is from the fourth canto. Ninth chapter, verse ten. a n i m i s a l o k n e n a k n a s i m a b a k w a t a m p a t s i b o t i k a u s a l o k i s i And th this is a sloka offered by Druva Maharaj. The salok ni na p e n s a l o k i t a w a i d o Druva Maharaj. Right, Druva Maharaj was a young boy. He went to the forest to get a. To get because he had a material desire, he was very upset. He was very angry, so he went to the forest to do austerity. So Druva Maharaj was born in a family. He was the son of a king, Maharaj. Uh, his father was Uttanapada. So Uttanapada, uh, he was also one of the sons of s w a m b u v a m a n u There were two sons, s w a m b u v a m a n u two sons of s w a m b u v a m a n u Uttanapada and Priyavrata. 
ลูกสองคนชื่อว่าอุดนปาดาแล้วก็ปรียวัดปรียวัด And and t r i a m b u v a m a n u had three daughters. So, so he had five children. t r i a m b u v a m a n u and Shatarupa, they had five children: two boys and three girls. So y a m b u v a m a n u l a g a p a l y a j i c h i t r a v a t a m i l u h a m o r h a k o n Am I saying it correct? Priya Vrata. Priya Vrata. Priya Vrata. Priya Vrata. Priya Vrata. Yeah. So he was a one of the. He was a brother with the uh, Dhruva Maharaj. So Dhruva Maharaj became the king. Right. But actually, what happened? Uh, his father had two wives. And so the, there were two wives, and each wife had a son. There were two two wives of the king. One was Suniti, and one was Suruchi. So Suruchi, she was a younger wife, and she was the favorite wife of the king. But Dhruva Maharaj, he was the son of Suniti. So what happened one day? Dhruva Maharaj was trying to get up onto his father's knee, but the so the the stepmother, Suruchi, she told him no. You're not born from my womb. You cannot go there. l e m o n e n d u a m a r a s a e a n a n t a k r a b i d a s d e n e o m m e l i n e a a w a t e n m i s t i a n a n t a k d a p a w a t e n m i e a k k a n u s h a n So d r u v a Maharaj, you know, he's a s h a t r i a He was born in the king's family. He's a s h a t r i a So s h a t r i a s nature is they can get very angry easily. So although Druva was only a young boy, five years old, when his mother wouldn't let him go on his father's lap, he became very angry and he was crying. Druva Maharaj, I think, may have been just five years old. So he went to his mother and told his mother what happened, and he told his mother what what to do. And his mother said, "What can you do?" She said, "I am not the favorite wife of your father." So then, we went and cried. So then, Dhruva Maharaj asked his mother, "Who can help me?" And so she told him, "Well, well, God can help you. When people are in distress, they pray to God." But then, the man asked, "Who can help me? And who 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 can help me?" So then, d r u v a m a r a j said to his mother, "Where can I find God?" And so the mother said, "Well, many great people, many people look for him." So d r u v a m a h a r a j said, "All right." Oh, you're going to go. He was only a young boy, only five years old, but he's very determined. And that's why he has the name Druva. Druva means determined. And so when he went into the forest, Narada Muni came, and Narada Muni said to him, "He said, 'Oh, you're just a young boy.'" He said, "Very dangerous here. You should come, go home. Come back when you grow up." So then he got a job with Narad Muni. So then he went to Dubai, and he got a job with Narad Muni. 
โอ้ยเธอเนี่ยเด็กมากเลยยังเด็กอายุน้อยแค่นี้ยังไม่ได้เราไปเธอไปกลับบ้านไปก่อน Narada Muni was testing Dhruva Maharaj, but Dhruva Maharaj was very serious. He said, "No," he said. He said, "I'm not going home." He said, "Can you help me to find God? Tell me." So, if he said, "If you don't want to help me, then just leave me alone. Don't disturb me." So Narada Muni gave him mantra. He said, "You chant this mantra: Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya." And he told him, "You go to this place. There's a lake there. You can meditate there on the bank of the lake." Narada Muni, he will give. So Dhruva Maharaj went to the forest and he did great austerity for six months. During the first month, he would only eat some leaf from the tree. Then the second month, he wouldn't take the leaves from the tree. He would only take the leaves which fell off the tree, which fell on the ground, and he would eat those, the dry leaves. So then, after that, then he started. He would only drink a little water. He wouldn't eat anything. He would just drink a little water, and not every day. Only every three days. And then. He stopped drinking water, and he was doing. He was controlling his breath. He was only breathing air. Once every nine days, he'd take a breath of air. So, because Dhruva Maharaj was doing all the austerity, the whole the whole universe was becoming hot. And all the people on the planets, they were all becoming hot because of the austerity of Dhruva Maharaj. So finally, the Lord came. The supreme personality of Godhead came on the back of Garuda and came to see Dhruva Maharaj and blessed him. Oh, how I'm going to sing. Harishna. Haribo, you back? Harishna, Maharaj. Yes. Back, and he blessed Dhruva Maharaj that he would be, that he would become the king and get a big kingdom. Ah, there's a special planet which is an eternal planet in the universe, the pole star, and all the planets in the universe they all rotate around the pole star. All right, so we have a quote here from Dhruva Maharaj. He's talking to the Lord, then he's saying to the Lord, he said that the pleasure I get by meditating on your lotus feet, he said that is enjoyed by all the pure devotees. But it cannot be your lotus feet cannot be approached by the transcendental pleasure of the impersonalists. 
ความสุขที่ได้รับจากการทําสมาธิที่พระบาร,รูปดอกบัวของโรงซึ่งสาวกผู้บริสุทธิ์รื่นเริงพวกไม่เชื่อในรูปลักษณ์ไม่สามารถเข้าถึงความสุขทิพย์เช่นนี้ด้วยการรู้แจ้งเห็นตน So even the impersonalist he cannot get pleasure from self-realization. So the karmis, the the karmis are the fruit of workers. They can only get promotion to the heavenly planets. Karmi, the f o r t i ทำงานเพื่อผลประโยชน์ทางวัตถุเนี่ยคือเขาจะปรารถนาความสุขเท่านั้น So these people who are going to the heavenly planets, they can never understand you. เขาก็เพื่อที่จะบรรลุไปสู่โลกสวรรค์เพราะฉะนั้นพวกที่เขามีความต้องการที่จะไปถึงโลกสวรรค์เนี่ยเขาจะไม่หวั่นเข้าใจตรง And they may they may have some happiness, but their happiness is nothing compared to the happiness of a devotee. เขาอาจจะได้รับความสุขแต่ว่าความสุขของเขาเนี่ยเปรียบไม่มีค่าอะไรเลยเมื่อเปรียบเทียบกับความสุขที่สาวกได้รับ The devotees enjoy the greatest happiness. เพราะความสุขสูงสุดเนี่ยคือได้รับโดยสาวก Okay, so we're going to stop there today. วันนี้เราก็จะจบคำบรรยายกันไว้เพียงเท่านี้นะคะ Next class will begin on chapter four. Okay. Are there any questions? Any q u e s t i o Yes. Yes. Chinese question. I can see. Then China foreign trader has a problem. Huh? Have any problem? Hmm. Vita Vati Madaji, Hare Krishna, Ding Bai Guru Day, Gan Fan Yi. Please ask about the benefit of service to the public. So the devotee is asking: Is there any difference between spiritual happiness and the happiness of devotional service? The question is: The happiness of the world and the happiness of the devotee is different. Yes, there's a big difference. That spiritual happiness—that's the happiness of the impersonalists, the brahmagyanis. They only go to the brahma joyti. Oh, yes, there is a difference because the happiness of the world is the happiness of the brahmagyanis. The happiness of the brahmagyanis is the happiness of the brahmagyanis. So that's that's their spiritual happiness. Ah, that's it. But that happiness of that happiness of the Brahman is just like one tiny drop of water from the ocean of happiness which you get from devotional service. Yes. All right. That was a good question, Vedavati. Thank you for asking that. I should have made it clear. I'm a reading. Okay. How you are going to study? Okay. Next. Uh, person asked, "Ding Bai, Maharaj, the Lien Hua Zhu. My question is, I want to become a great devotee." 成为灵性导师心目中重要的门徒，这样的灵性愿望是好的吗 ？Oh, is it good to have a desire to be the very most important servant of the spiritual master, or to be a big devotee? Is that is that is that good to have that kind of desire? เพราะว่าเราต้องการที่อยากจะเป็นแบบว่าลูกศิษย์คนโปรดของพระอาจารย์หรือว่าอยากเป็นสาวกคนดังอย่างนี้เนี่ยอันนี้มันเป็นเป็นความรู้สึกที่ดีไหม That's not very good desire no ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ถือว่าเป็นความสุขที่ดีมากนะ It it may happen Krishna may arrange it but you shouldn't desire like that เ
ของกิชนาจะจัดจัดการให้เป็นแบบนั้นไปแต่ว่าเราไม่ควรที่จะคิดเลยอยากอะไรแบบนี้ Lord Chaitanya teaches us to be the servant of the servant of the servant many times the servant to be a very tiny servant เราเสวนาในสงสารให้เราเป็นสาเป็นผู้รับใช้ของผู้รับใช้ของผู้รับใช้We should not desire to be recognized and praised by others. That is not good. That is materialistic. Okay. Arjuna? Yes, Gamaraj. Uh, from Vishnu Priya Madhuji got a question. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Dhanavar Panam, please accept my humble obeisances of glory to Srila Prabhupada. Um, Asana Prahena Naka. Kamtham Mohan Ki Kuru Thakad Vasa Vok Nea Kho Chai Nea Khi Chivi Thang Vatu Thi Me Ki Kao Thu Nei Kha Saka Mun Ka Wa Kho Chai Kham Thay Yo Thay Yang Kham Kheng Khan Na Ma Tham อุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้เหมือนอยากได้การยอมรับอยากได้ตําแหน่งหรือว่าอยากจะดีกว่าสาวกคนอื่นโดยที่แข่งกับเขาเรียกว่าพยายามทําอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้อะค่ะสาวกคนประเภทเนี้ยค่ะซึ่งไม่ถือว่าแบบเหมือนกับว่าเสียสละโดยบริสุทธิ์จะเกิดอะไรขึ้นกับเขาบ้างอะค่ะถ้าเกิดว่าเขาคิดแบบนี้เลยค่ะ if a devoted think Uh, to be the uh, to be a better devotee than the other followers, or he being trying to act better and to prove himself is better than others. Then what will happen to the person or to that devotee? You become influenced of false pride. เขาก็จะตกอยู่ในเงื้อมือของความอหังการนั่นเองอันนี้ว่าฟอลด์ดาวแล้วก็จะตกต่ำลง We should be humble. We should think I'm not the best. I'm not. I'm not the best. I'm not the worst. I'm insignificant. เราเนี่ยก็ไม่ควรคิดเราแค่ควรคิดว่าฉันไม่ใช่เอ่อเป็นคนที่ดีที่สุดหรือเป็นคนที่แย่ที่สุดแต่ฉันไม่ใช่คนที่ที่สุดของอะไรเลย The more we advance, the more we think I'm very fallen, I'm very unqualified. เออบอกว่าฉันเนี่ยไม่ได้เป็นคนที่เอ่อไอ้นี่ที่สุดแต่ว่าฉันน่ะเป็นคนที่ไม่มีคุณสมบัติมากที่สุด All the devotees, all the great acharyas, they all teach us to be very fallen and think of ourselves as very low and insignificant. อาชาริยาของเราเนี่ยทุกท่านเนี่ยได้สอนเราไว้ให้เราเนี่ยมีความคิดแบบแบบทำตนก็คือแบบที่ให้เรารู้ว่าเราเนี่ยเป็นสาวกผู้ตกต่ำ Every morning when we greet Panchatattva we offer the song we sing to them is Patita Pavana Hetu Tava Avatara Mosa Mo that you have come to deliver the fallen souls Lord Chaitanya the fallen fallen please deliver me no devotee praise I'm very great The devotees pray, "I'm very fallen." And so, if you want to get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, we pray that I'm very fallen. Please, please you save me first. Oh, ah, the dawn chow. Now, there will be a song that we will sing to the Lord Chaitanya. In the song, it will say, "The Lord is a fallen person, and he is very low." And then, the song will say, "The Lord is a fallen person, and he is very low." And then, the song will say, "The Lord is a fallen person, and he is very low." And then, the song will say, "The Lord is a fallen person, and he is very low." And then, the song will say, สาวผู้ตกต่ำเนี่ยฟื้นฟูมันไม่มีบทเพลงไหนที่จะร้องว่า
ข้าเป็นสาวกคู่ฉันเยี่ยมพอกล้องส่งมาช่วยข้าไปทีเดียวมันมันไม่มีบทเพลงแบบนั้น I'm not very thinking I'm a very great devotee then you're very stupid ถ้าเราคิดว่าเราเป็นสาวกคู่ยิ่งใหญ่เนี่ยอันนั้นเนี่ยเป็นความคิดที่แบบว่าบ้าไปแล้ว Oh, okay. So Vaishnavi has. Uh, Vaishnavi. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Ah, uh, Ajarna, ah, Pita, me, ni, 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 So will Krishna accept any of the devotional service that he performs, or everything he does will become zero? Yeah, that kind of devotional service is not going to be very. It's not very devotional. เพราะฉะนั้นถ้ามีแบบว่าจุดประสงค์ที่ทำไปมันเป็นแบบนั้นมันถือว่าไม่ได้แบบว่า A devotee thinks that I'm very unqualified. I have nothing to give to Krishna. A devotee prays to Krishna that I'm so fallen. We pray to get the mercy. Please be merciful on me. And if the devotee can can do any service for Krishna, then he thinks it's the mercy of his spiritual teacher. Without the mercy of the spiritual master, you can never give any service to Krishna. You cannot offer anything directly to Krishna. You have to give to your spiritual teacher. By the mercy of the spiritual master, we get the mercy of Krishna. You don't get the mercy of Krishna directly from Krishna. It has to come through the parampara. You go to Krishna directly. Krishna will never take it, never see you. He will ignore you. You have to have the recommendation from Krishna's devotees. Vaishnavi Mataji has a question. Hare Krishna, yes, Guru Maharaj, my, my humble obeisances, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. My question is, uh, we discussed that we don't have to know a lot. Uh, I was thinking, uh, Srimad Bhagavad and uh, yeah, Yes, Guru Maharaj. What, what does it? What is that we should not have? We don't have to maybe read other. But Tom, that's a big book to read. You know, you're not gonna. Yeah, you know, if you can learn the whole Srimad Bhagavatam, that's really amazing. It's so big. It's eighteen thousand. The whole Srimad Bhagavatam. So you cannot expect to learn the whole Srimad Bhagavatam so easily. Parts of the scriptures. We hear the, the important parts of the scriptures. Get the fundamental yeah. principles right. Yeah. 
because you have to yes. he, you have to hear the the basic philosophy and make sure you have a clear understanding of the philosophy and then the whatever little bit we know we can use that to present yeah. krishna consciousness yes Maharaj, yeah we, this maybe this is a common question should we spend in chanting or reading well uh, yeah they're, they're both better than the other you know ch yeah. chanting is good and reading is also good every day you have to read every day you have to chant I think, uh, uh, 16 rounds is the minimum and uh, uh, you're telling like we should try to improve more than 16 uh, yes and uh, than reading for me yeah, so I'm, I, do, I never chanted the more. I mean, oh, you should chant more on the courtesy. Tomorrow's the courtesy. Yeah. Yeah. Ega Desi 25 rounds. I do it, Guru Maharaj. You do? Okay. Yeah. All right. That's yeah. good. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Guru Maharaj. Try to. We can balance both. Try to improve the quality of the chanting. Quality, yeah. yeah. You know, chant with attention. Attention, yeah. 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 Yes, Guru Maharaj. Clearly, and don't don't be missing out words. And, you know, chant with and chant with devotion. Chant with feeling like you know you're like your daughter when she was a child. She would cry for you, so you should yeah. cry for Krishna, just like your child would cry for you when she was a young girl. Yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So that should be the mood of the devotee in chanting, like we're a child separated from our parents. And Lord Krishna is our father and we're separated from him. So we're, we should cry separation. When we call his name, we're calling the name to, of Krishna to get his attention, to please come and save us. Yeah. So chanting is important, but reading is also important too. You have to read. You should have a regular program to read Prabhupada's books, you know. Are you, have you read the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam? Yes, Guru Maharaj. We have a class going on and I read it along with that. Oh. They give the homework. Srimad Bhagavatam, the thing I don't read at all, Bhagavad Gita, I, I'm not reading it. Uh, now with these classes, we are reading Nectar of Devotion, Krishna book, Nectar of Instruction. Yeah, Bhagavad Gita, yeah, not thoroughly. I have to do it. Yes. Yeah, you have to do it. You have to do. You should do the Bhakti Shastri course. You can take the course, but you know. Bhakti we, Shastri, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they told me it's very, very tough. No, yeah. Who said that? <laughs> no, no, Guru Maharaj. Just uh, it's a lot of things to memorize, and yeah, sometimes I hear. Yeah. Not so much to memorize. Not so bad, Bhakti Shastra. Okay. Basic, uh, yes, Guru basic, I can try to do it. Everyone who wants to get second initiation, they have to do Bhakti Shastri. Second, yeah. Yes, Bhakti Shastri. Yeah. Nowadays, they won't give second initiation unless one has studied Bhakti Shastri. So better to do it, Bhakti Shastri. Yes. You should do it when you get the chance. Yeah. It's online. You can do it. Many people around the world are all doing it. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, I should do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Yogita Mataji has a question. Uh -huh. Hare Krishna Gurudev, please accept some humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Gurudev, I, I hope this question doesn't sound very um, stupid or emotional, but honestly, I just can't figure out at times. Even though I, I truly, you know, want to feel like the lowest person, but my mind really opposes that thought by making me feel you already have Gurudev's mercy on you, which is undoubtable. I repeat this almost like very often. I won't even. <clears throat> but uh, it's like as if my mind arguing with the mind. 
I'm saying I'm already very fallen. If my Gurudev's hand wasn't on me, I know nothing would have been possible. So then again, the mind backfires, see? So you just don't have any other thing to say to the mind then, you know? Uh, it's like, I'm truly appreciating the mercy every minute because without your words, but you know, that, that feeling, that lowly feeling that one wants to genuinely feel at times, it's as my I, I don't know what else to tell myself. Well, Krishna will arrange to take away your pride. You know, he, already, he already took away a lot of your pride. And whatever pride you've got left, he'll take it away before you leave the material world. And before, yeah. before you give up this material body, Krishna will arrange with your old age and the dwindling body, then you'll become more humble, you'll lose your pride. Mm. Thank you, Gurudev. Thank you for your blessing. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Gurudev. Hare Krishna. Okay, Archana, no Hare more. Hare Krishna. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, all right. Oh, Sati? Uh, 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 well, some Arjuna, some, yes, somebody is not somebody is an impersonal, a Mayavadi, but he wants to become a devotee. They want to become a devotee. Um, he, he wants to become a devotee. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're a, they're a Mayavadi, but uh -huh. they're thinking about becoming a devotee. To do. Okay. Well, what they need to do is with devotion and they need to serve. They need to do devotional service. They need to hear about Krishna from the devotees and they need to chant. And they need to eat Krishna Prasadam and see become devotees. Every piece of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. Right, the birds, the same birds, the swans are together. So the same way, the devotee, those who are devotees, should be with the devotees, and those who are mayavadis, they're with the mayavadis. So some, and he has to hear about Krishna. He has to read the books, he has to read Prabhupada's books and read about Krishna, and he has to. Say, we worship Krishna. We worship Tulsi. We bow down, we offer respects, all of these things. Krishna, make their cook. when they cook, they have to offer to his prasada. And when they offer, they have to recite prayers to the spiritual teachers and to Krishna. And so they have to learn how to become a devotee and they, they can also become devotees. There's no barrier. Anybody can become a devotee. Impersonalists also become devotees. We have Buddhists also who are devotees. We have Buddhist monks who are devotees. So impersonalists, they can also... Sukadeva Goswami was an impersonalist and became a devotee. And the four Kumaras, they were brahma they became devotees. So there are examples how people... Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, who was a Mayavadi, became a devotee by association with Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya met with the Mayavadi sannyasis, Prakashananda Sarasati, who was the leader. They all chanted Hare Krishna and became devotees by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. 
All right. แต่ทีนี้คุณหมานะคะก็บอกว่าความจริงเนี่ยทุกคนสามารถมาเป็นสาวกได้ไม่ว่าเขาจะเป็นแบบไหนก็แล้วแต่จากการที่เขาเนี่ยคบหาสมาคมกับสาวกแล้วก็มาฟังมาทําการรับใช้กิจหน้าตรงนี้เนี่ยเขาก็จะค่อยๆเปลี่ยนพัฒนาตนเองเนี่ยมาเป็นสาวกได้ตอนสมัยตอนแรกเนี่ยสุกเดวโกสวามีเนี่ยก็เป็นไม่ใช่ในรูปลักษณ์มาก่อนสุดท้ายก็มาเป็นสาวกของกิจหน้าได้สำหรับบุมบัตจารย์ตอนแรกก็ไม่ได้เป็นสุดท้ายมาคุยกับพระองค์เจ้าเจตันเนี่ยก็มาเป็นสาวกได้เพราะฉะนั้นทุกอย่างเนี่ยมันมีการเปลี่ยนแปลงได้อยู่แล้วยาโอเคโอเคได้ได้สองเมื่อวันนี้ขอบคุณโอเค thank you very much Archana thank you Sati Krishna ให้เงินเงินไปหมดให้เงินเงินไปหมดใช่ไหม呃，想要马达基问，就是有一位新朋友现在开始学习《波迦梵歌》，并且开始答应念诵圣名了，但是他没有托拉西念珠，问用佛珠，呃，代替可以吗？有效果吗 ？Yes, if if they're using Buddhist beads, it's okay. They don't have any Tausi beads. Can they use Buddhist beads to chant? Will it still have effect? Yes, the holy name will have effect. If they chant the holy name, it will have effect. It doesn't matter what she chants on. Later, we can get her proper beads. The, you, the difference between the Buddhist beads and, the, and, and our beads is that we put a knot between the beads. They don't put any knot between the beads and the Buddhist beads. But they have 108 beads usually. So, but she can chant on the Buddhist beads to begin with, and later on we'll get her beads to chant on. And yeah, the the power is in the holy name. It's not the beads which are so important. The important thing is the chanting of the holy name. So let her chant on the Buddhist beads. Yeah. No questions answered. Yes, good morning. Okay, Ganchi. Thank you, Archana. Thank you, Sati. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.